Hi everybody, it's Erin from Me Papery. Welcome back to the channel. How is everybody doing today? Um, I'm just doing, I've got like an hour before I need to uh, head out of the house here. So I'm just doing kind of a, a quick housekeeping kind of video, I guess. I don't even know what to call I'm not even sure what the plan is, to be honest with you. So... Um, so last, last we met here in the e-papery studios, I was working on, um, these ATC cards to wrap up my January Junk Journal Jam, um, collaboration. And I think these all turned out super cute. Um, and if you'll remember, if you watched that video, you'll remember when I was cutting out my paper that I watercolored, I ended up with some tall, skinny kind of shapes that weren't ATC sized. So, um... I decided I did this off camera, but I decided to make some cute little tags um, with these. And they're very simple. I just backed these with, um, you know, with a, a antique colored paper. I put a quote, a printed quote on them that's kind of celestial themed. These are not my digital. These are from Release the Crafton um, and her shop is on Etsy very cute digitals. I'm using, um, I'm using, I think a couple of her digitals to kind of augment, um, my own in this journal. So I thought these would be really cute. And then I just added a simple bulb pin and some cute charms, but I thought they turned out really cute. So I thought I would just kind of show them. And again, um, and I did sew around these. And again, I'm just, you know, trying to prove that, hey, you can do cute things without going over the top crazy complicated um, on these. But I thought those turned out really cute. So I'm going to set these aside and these aside in my little project box. And then I have spent so much time this last week fussy cutting and cutting out ephemera and stuff. Um, I did go out online. And I did purchase um, kind of a, just an images kit. Now, I could absolutely have put these images together myself. I'm a digital creator, I have access to a bunch of these images, but sometimes it's just, you know, it's nice to pay a couple of dollars to support another artist and not have to spend hours and hours compiling these myself. Um, So anyway, so I'm just going to kind of start sorting some of these. Now this, this set is my own, um, this is basic blues, um, from a papery. This is my own kit, but I thought it's, it's basic blue. It's meant to mix and match when you need, when you need blue stuff. So I grabbed... I grabbed that and printed out a couple of sheets of that that I thought would be just nice like tag bases and stuff. And then some of this other stuff, there's some sirens outside. My goodness, something's going on. Maybe a couple, oh my gosh, it sounds like an ambulance and I mean, it's, it's wild. Something, something's going on. I think maybe car accident or something. I don't know, but all right. Um, and then I got a bunch of, da, 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 different, I bought like two different ephemera kits. They're not ephemera kits in that they're like ready-made tags or anything, but they're like ephemera kits in that it's like different images, um, printed out. And what I did was I printed them out in a few different sizes. So you can see this is the same. So I think this is like the original size. And then I printed out, I think one once in uh, two, she two pages per sheet and then once four pages per sheet. So I've got some teeny tiny stuff and I've got some bigger stuff and I've got some medium sized stuff. Um, and some little decorative images and some labels. So that's how you can maximize the use of your digitals too. Um, see the difference between, this was the original size and then that was 
by printing multiple pages per sheet, I can get a smaller size. So, um, but yeah, so anyway, I've, I spent quite a bit of time, um, over the course of a couple of evenings, just kind of fussy cutting some stuff out. I printed some stuff on vellum. So, oh, there's another basic blues tag. But I printed some stuff on vellum in some different sizes. Um, so this will be fun to play with. I've got some ideas for some different things. So it was it was fun actually to kind of cut these out. Um, already I was starting to get ideas for, you know, how I could incorporate some of these things and what I might do with them. So anyway, so that's what I've spent some time doing this week. And I've kind of got these all, I just tossed everything into a gallon size Ziploc bag for now. Um, what I will do on my own off camera because I can't imagine that you'd be that interested in watching me do this, but I will sort these into like, you know, small, medium, large, pieces probably um, because some of these things will be able to just function as cards and that and other things will be like more like little embellishments so it'll be nice to have those sorted out so anyway so there's that and then just you know the next thing I need to start doing for this journal is taking a look at um, my different papers and things that I have um, and just starting to get some ideas of what kind of special things I want to do with the pages. Um, you know, the types of, the types of things I want to do before you sew the signatures together. Cause there's some things that I do before I sew the signatures together. And then there's other things that I do after I sew the signatures together. So, you know, if you want to, if you, if you're going to do something like sew around the edge of a page or, you know, sew in some flippity flappies or, things like that. Those are things that you want to do probably before you put the signatures together. So, um, so yeah, it's just kind of, um, starting to take a look at that. So here is my project box. And I've been doing some just kind of gathering so here are the papers that I have set aside to make ephemera. Bunch of different papers. I'm not gonna use all of this. There will be leftovers. Um, here is the um, ephemera kit, all of the tags and the cards and belly bands and everything that I have cut out from the digital. So that, that stuff from Basic Blues and that will go in there. The larger cards and pieces will go in there. Um, these are, this is my bag full of finished, already decorated, already sewn. There are clusters and tags and cards and some pockets and stuff in there. So there's that stuff. And then, um, let's see. I've got this page that um, mom made for this journal. Sorry, I keep hitting the camera. I've got this page that mom made for this journal. So those are in here. And I've, I've pulled a bunch of other types of paper that I wanted to put in as pages. Um, so book pages and map pages and um, postcard and you know different things like that. And of course the pages from the digital. So there's there's that stuff plus the pages that that mom made. And I'm labeling these piles because I'm trying to stay organized. Ha ha ha. And then there were some papers that I wanted to do some treatment to. So I did pick out these kind of golden papers that um, these were part of that vintage, um, that big old grab bag of vintage ephemera that I bought. 
but I wanted to kind of grunge these up a little bit. So I did some coffee spraying on these um, and they're big. So I've got to figure out, well, what do I want to do with these in terms of making pages out of them? So I've got those. And then this was a little journal that I got at the Dollar Tree that had just white pages in it. And it's got teeny tiny little gray stars um, on it. They're barely visible, but I thought I would grunge these up. And I also added a gold um, Distress Mica Spray to them. And then these are gonna get joined um, to make pages as well. So I did a bunch of those. Um, some of them will get joined. Some of them might just get folded up to put into little envelopes or um, little half pages and that. Oh, these can go, I just tossed these in here, but these can go into the finished ephemera bag, which is over there. Okay, and then I've had the fabric pulled. So I've got some fabric here. Um, this was a upholstery sample. This is an upholstery sample. This is an upholstery sample. Um, so yellowy golds I'm, I'm definitely working in. I've got some gold lace. I'm pulling out my metallic golds in this journal. Um, and I'm also working with some sunflower imagery. So I thought this lace, I think it's supposed to be daisies, but hey, it could, it could register as a sunflower too. Um, especially in this gold color. So I pulled that lace out. I just bought some of these at Joann's. They were on clearance. Um, so these can be I mean, certainly used in a row as like a belly band or on a spine or something maybe, but I also figured like cutting, cutting them out into individual discs would be fun, um, like little sun discs for embellishments. There are those sirens go again, my goodness. And then I've got these also. Um, I don't know if you can see those or not through that cellophane. Let me just, if you'll permit me, So these I've been kind of hoarding for a bit now um, are really pretty. And I've got some, this is some blue and white kind of cloudy looking fabric that you've seen me use. Um, and I got some navy lace isn't that gorgeous it stretches a little bit too I don't know yet what I'm going to use it on but it's so beautiful um yeah so anyway and then I've got this lace that's just kind of like a nice um more of a yellowy antique color and I've got this trim that's kind of a very soft champagne -y gold I've got some bias tape that's more of that golden taupey color. So you can definitely see kind of the color scheme I'm I'm gravitating around here. Um, and then I've got some blue rickrack. Um, I'm sure some other ribbons and that will get pulled in and, and whatnot. And if I manage to go find any better fabric, maybe I will pull some additional fabric in. But um, yeah, so that's kind of what I'm working with now. Um, and so, yeah, it's just time to start kind of diving in and making some some more items and, you know, getting ready to getting ready to put this mammer jammer together. So, well, what do you say we figure out what we're going to do with these? I'm just doing some folding. Paper's a little bit um, brittle. That's what I wanted to say, brittle. 
but I think we'll make it work. Cut the wrong line. That's okay. Okay, so this is folded this way. I'm gonna decide. I think I'm gonna cut this flap off. Unless do I wanna just put this here? Like this. For like a little side pocket. Maybe. These will be two side pockets. This can be a pocket. That can be a pocket. And that can be a pocket. Now the first thing I think I want to do is put some washi up the seams where we're folding these items so that the, um, yeah, so that they don't break. So let's do that line. Kind of uh, really helpful when your washi has a grid on it, isn't it? When you're looking to cut it to size where I want it. So, one down here. And I'm struggling with getting the backing off because my fingers are cold. Meanwhile, my glue stick is drying. But I thought it would be easier to put the glue stick down before I was wrestling with washi tape. <sighs> struggle, guys. The struggle I'm having today. When I know I'm under a time constraint and I'm just trying to get some crafting done before I have to leave. Ugh. My goodness. Okay. Now, for the bottom pocket seam, I'm just gonna use regular masking tape. So, and it doesn't need to be like edge to edge. I'll help create like a bit of a, a scrappy look with this little piece on this side. Scrappy look, grungy, scrappy. Almost as though you don't quite know what you're doing. That's the look we're going for. All right, let's get some washi on this side. Now, normally, I might not futz around with this so much, but sometimes I think it's like these pages where you're like, ah, this is junky, but I just kind of want to use it, and I'm going to futz with it for a while. Those end up being kind of the coolest pages, so I'm going to go with it. And I'm not gonna lie, the um the the gilded washi tape with the grungy coffee stained old paper. I'm not gonna lie, that's kinda it's kinda cool. I'm I'm liking it. Struggle with this washi tape backing again. 
because clearly I haven't learned my lesson. Oh goodness. There we go. There we go. Oh, something's coming up. Is it happening? Is it happening? Hold on. There we go. There we go. Yes. How exciting. Were you guys riveted? I know I was. So if you haven't caught on to what I'm doing yet, basically what I'm doing is I'm taking this big old sheet of paper and I'm folding it up into kind of this like pocket wallet thing um, that'll be sewn into a signature. That's what's happening. That is what is happening for better or for worse. And we'll see how it turns out, but. And then what I do with the other sheet, I don't know yet. Um, I like to kind of keep a rhythm going to the journals and have kind of something similar in all the signatures, but this one, who knows? Maybe I'll just be completely weird and do something completely different in each one. And not worry about having the same, you know, the same thing in each signature. What do you guys think? Leave a comment for me and let me know what, what you think of that idea. Just, I mean, throw all caution to the wind and be crazy. Or should I have a, a formula to this and, uh, you know, try and, and have a rhythm to how the signatures go? And I just ripped that. It's okay because we will tape it. I put some some tape on there, so this one's gonna have to go this direction. way which means this one can go this way okay. let's do this one side at a time I think I'm gonna just kind of let that pocket come in just a, a smidge a rooney Same thing with this one. Nope, that one's actually okay. Okay, so that one's good. And then, duh. Duh, duh, duh. Okay, so this one's gonna go this way. Like this. This piece needs to be cut just a bit. like that and this one needs a little bit of reinforcement inside that pocket that side done. I'm just gonna, you know. Okay, so now I think this one might feel better going this way. This one needs to be cut just a bitty bit. Just a bitty bit though. Okay. Like that. And we'll reinforce. 
reinforce the top edge. Like that. So, this is going to go up like this. But we do need a, a top edge on that. Oh, these were going to be side pockets, so we need side edges. Side edges. There we go. Okay, so this side needs a side edge. Side edge. up this way. Okay, I'm going to move you for just a minute. And the reason I'm doing so much reinforcing on these pockets is just because it, it's old paper and when I started folding it, it was like, ugh, no. So, okay, I guess let's do, let, let me do some inking and stuff and let's see what happens. My goodness, that was that was an experience, wasn't it? Let's ink in blue. Ooh, fun. Let's just do something a little bit different. Or was or would that be just too crazy? Would it show up? I want to test it, see if it shows up decently on this on this paper. Mm, I don't know. I'm scared. I'm scared. It looks cool. Like I think I could stamp something. On, on there maybe but I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna just you know be boring and ink and walnut stain sorry guys all right well I think it looks cool. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to stop and I'm going to sew and I'll see you in a bit. Okay, back from the sewing machine. So here's what I did. I sewed around each panel um, and around each pocket. So it is now time to adhere these pockets, adhere these pockets to the, to the, um, You know, the thing. <laughs> what is she saying? Yes. Okay, so I'm going to get these all kind of folded into place. I know this one's coming up this way, so let's get this one into place. And this one is going to be a side pocket coming this way, so I need to adhere this side and this side. And I'm going to use some double-sided tape for this purpose. This piece goes into place. And let's get this one done. Flip this over. And this one's also going to be a side pocket. So um, I need to do, again, the top and the side. So the sewing that I did not only you know, looks really cool, but it also is just one more thing that's helping to strengthen the edges of the paper. As grungy as this looks, it should hold up pretty well. All right, now this one is also coming up this side, but this is going to be a top loading pocket, so I just have to do the sides on this one. Making sure I line those edges up the way I want them and then pressing down. 
this one is coming up on this side as well. So, and this is another top loading pocket. one's going to come up on this side as a top loading pocket as well. So okay, so all right, there we go. So grab a piece of Scrap paper here. You've got pocket here. It'll flip and have a side pocket here. And then on the other side, have a pocket here. And then this page is just open, but on this side we have a pocket here and it flips and has a pocket here. So that'll be fun. Lots of areas to have some fun and decorate. Um, I'm not gonna get a chance to decorate this today and I think I would like to make one more of these out of this other sheet of paper as well. So um, yeah, that was a lot of fun. It was, it was work, but it was worth it. I think this is gonna be a very cool addition to the journal. I don't have like a ton of time left today so I think I'm just gonna maybe make like a couple little envelopes. I saw Tina um, from Shabby Dabby Dude on her mask make that she posted maybe yesterday, maybe today. I don't know. I always get um, I always get behind on my YouTube watching, but um, she was making some envelopes, and I thought, well, that looks kind of fun. So maybe we'll make a couple for for this journal. Um, so let's see if we've got any that would be. I think these are all backed with writing paper. That would be a good envelope in here. Kind of need something almost with a... That would be fun. Feeling like some of the more decorative pages, like with just a little bit more going on, might be fun. That might look cool. Okay, I'm I'm thinking that's that's maybe enough. We'll see if we can get that many done. Okay, that one's already been trimmed. I'm going to trim the whites off of these. How's everybody doing? Let me know in the comments um, what your plans are for February. Does anybody have any big projects going on? Any vacations planned? Um, what is it that you're working on in your own craft area or studio? I want to know. I'm hoping to get this project done before spring. <laughs> we'll see. Y'all know how long it takes me to get through a journal, so. <laughs> but we'll see. We'll see. Um, because there's one that I would like to make for my mother-in-law for Mother's Day. And I'm kind of, that's, that's my goal. I would really like to get this one done so that I can work on hers for Mother's Day. And if I don't get this one done by say March, um, then I might set this one aside for a bit so that I can work on. Do I just wanna like fold these full on in thirds or do I wanna make these a little smaller? I'm gonna talk to myself. <laughs> just so as you know, I really, <laughs> Cut that piece off, then yeah, let's do that. 
sorry. Feeling my way through this. I don't really make policy envelopes that often. Um, I've done policy closures for different things, but I don't really make these too often. And I'm kind of straying already from Tina's method. <laughs> but... And that's only because I'm getting just a little bit picky about how I want the paper. Um, how I want this paper to look. So. Yeah, that looks, that looks good cut a little bit of the butterfly's wings off, but it looks pretty on the back. So I think we'll go, we'll allow that. Plug in my glue gun. Although I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to use it because the studio is pretty, pretty cool today. So we're gonna do that for the bottom and then this top is like nothing special to be honest. So I think I might, no, I might leave it tall because maybe I don't wanna cover up this butterfly once it's, once the flap is closed. So I was gonna chop a little bit off, but I think I don't wanna cover up the butterfly. So, all right, so that's, that's, that's the way Tina did it. And then what she did is she just mitered these corners while it was folded. And then in terms of this, I think I can probably use a corner rounder maybe like that. Okay, and then I've got to cut out these parts like that and like that so we're leaving the floppy at the bottom and then I'm going to cut off the two side floppies up top except that now I've cut them on the line, but now I wanna come in and just cut them a little bit at kind of a, a rounded angle. Like that. So that there's a little bit of a, a better opening there. Okay, I did it. Let's pull in a bit of walnut stain. There we go. Did I get everything? I did. Oh. I have a steer straight. There we go. It's actually working. So, glue those together. And that up there we go that's cute all right there's one down 
All right, let's see what we can do with this one. I'm gonna make this one just a little bit wider. I wanna make sure I'm not going too wide that it won't fit in the, in the um, journal though. There we go. That's fine. I was a little less precious about where we were, but I do have an owl on the front, so that makes me happy. Okay. I could try doing something just a little crazy with that, huh? So I think what I'm gonna do instead of trying to hold this in place, um, I am going to trace it because every time I try and do the thing where you hold it in place, I feel like it it moves on me. Do I have this the right way? Do I have it the right way? Does that look? Yeah, that looks right. Okay. So I'm just gonna trace this because I feel like it moves on me every time I try and do it the other the other way where I hold it in place and just cut along. Um, and I'm pretty good at following lines, so. <laughs> round these off just a little bitty bit. There we go. All right. Cut this off. This background paper is from Basic Blues also. The writing sheet. I use this one a lot. I just really love it. It's a nice color and it's got some nice kind of blue grunge on it. Remembering my kind of curved angle on this this time. This side of the paper is from my own Celestial kit, in case you're wondering. Let's get it glued into place. All right, so. with how wide that panel is underneath you could almost use that as like a little secret a little secret pocket there we go so there we've got that one 
a little wider. Okie dokie. Let's see if I can actually do Tina's method now. <laughs> okay, so she did kind of like, oh, I want it like this. And then I want it like, you know, this. And then what she did was she like folded it back. And then she cut along this line. Like that. She uses her scissors and just cuts along the line. I'm we're going to just use my paper cutter, even though it's be making craggly edges right now. Um, there we go. There we go. Very nice. Make a very thin... little edge down there. salvage this butterfly for another use. So I'm just going to chop that off. And I didn't chop it off very straight. That's for dang sure. I'm still getting used to this paper cutter, guys. There we go. Okay. And then we'll just make a smaller flap this way too, to preserve this picture as much as possible. Okay, so cut there, miter there. And in this one, let's see, I've got a paper cutter or a corner rounder with decorative edges. What do you say we try that? This is, since it's a smaller envelope. There we go. This way. There we go. And the same on this side. There we go. And let's ink. This paper is also released the craft in. Um, this one, I think it's her, it's called Summer and Sunflowers. It wasn't like a specifically a celestial package, um, but the colors were just so awesome. And I liked the sunflowers and I thought that was cool. So I really wanted to add it to this journal. Um, so I went with it. Her digitals are so much fun. Um, and if you haven't checked out her channel, she does um, she does a series of videos called Storycraft, where she tells 
like fairy tales, folk, folk tales and fairy tales um, while she does a craft. And um, she goes to find like the oldest version of the tale that she can. So you kind of get like the original story and some of them are pretty disturbing, but it sure is a lot of fun. Um, <laughs> so anyway, I enjoy catching up with her um, on her channel too. So fun stuff. And let's see, this one, and then this background is from my um, Autumn is in the Air. Digital kit. So I'm mixing and matching all over the place. Okay, you know what I'd like to do, because I just love this and I really don't want to cut it off. I'm going to, I'm going to fold this flap on the inside and then I'm going to put glue on the flap. Not too much that it's going to squirt all over, but I'm going to just put the glue on the flap there and then glue it this way. So that I've got the full picture on this side and it's not obscured. So I think that looks that looks nice. All right. So I've got three envelopes made for my journal and I've got some scraps here um which I think it would make some cute some cute things. Um so this might just make a cute little something to tuck into a pocket. So I think let's clean this up a little bit. It's got janky edges because of the way that I cut the flaps off the envelope. So I'm just gonna clean that up carefully. And there's a little white edge over here. I'm gonna use my decorative corners again, just to add something a little bit different. And why not? Why don't we make it look like it's a big ticket that folds out? Huh? That's cool. Just gonna ink. There, so there we've got the inside. It goes this way. And let's put just a little, a fun little closure on there. It's gonna clean my cutting up a little bit on this one. I was, I can tell this might have been towards the end of my fussy cutting and I was potentially kind of over it. <laughs> My scissors that I have upstairs are not the most pleasurable. I don't know why I can't seem to find a good pair of scissors for upstairs. Every pair I buy seems to just be a disappointment. Um, I love using embroidery scissors really for the most part um, <clears throat> for fussy cutting, but if you're doing a, a lot of fussy cutting all at once, it does get to be kind of hard. Um, it hurts my fingers because the, the holes aren't, aren't very big. So anyway, all right, so. So just putting this little circle closure on here. Let that dry without it being closed. So hopefully I don't close it shut. 
Okay, what do we want to do with these scraps here? I mean, this might be kind of a cute, like, little flap or something on a page. And then what I'm going to do is just put in not quite half an inch, like three-eighths of an inch. Because I still want to leave clearance for this bow. And I'm just going to kind of give that a score. And fold. So that'll be like a little fold out writing space. And this will be a cute little spot to put like a little picture or something. So quick little side flap. And what are we going to do with this one? Well, this one could be, this one could be kind of a, we could fold this over a page. There's really nothing much on the back, but we could decorate that. But it's just, this itself just looks really beautiful, doesn't it? So what if we just made kind of a fold over to pin into place? Might put some lace or something on, on these edges. That might look nice. I think I need to buy a reinker for my um, for my walnut stain. Feels like it's getting pretty pretty dryish, so have to have to make an investment there. I'm gonna try not to buy too much this year, but that's easier said than done sometimes, isn't it? Okay, well, let's maybe find something to decorate the back of that. This might work. That goes down there. And how about I get some of that lace out? Whoa, that wasn't what I wanted. Making a mess. Today on the Bumbling Crafter with Erin. How to not glue down lace, that's what we're doing. Let's see if we can do a better job with this side, guys. Much better, much better. There we go, there. So that'll just hang over the top of a page or top of a pocket or something. There, all right. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Have a great rest of your day. Let me know about what you think about these cute little projects um, in the comments. So remember I made a couple of envelopes, three envelopes today. Um, and with the scraps, we made this little fold-out writing space, tri-fold writing space. Um, I made this little over-the-page flip, and I made a side flip ready to glue into one of the pages. So, um, yeah, and then, of course, this mammer jammer of a pocket here which i think looks really cool so you can kind of see where we're going with this but i think it looks great let me know what you think um and if you want to try making this pocket and how you think i should decorate it all right guys i will see you soon bye